We'll begin with the pledge. Oh, can I share? Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for Spanish, one nation, God, divisible, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you. And Missoula County acknowledges that this event in the Sophie Moise room takes place on the Aboriginal territories of the Salish and Kalispell people. Um, is there any public announcements? Or public comment on items not on the agenda? Our current claims list as of August 31st, 2022 to September 6, 2022 is $914,305.54. We have five hearings this afternoon, and we'll begin with Chris Lounsbury with our initiative. Initiate hearing? Is that how? Initial. Initial. Yeah. <laughs> Initial hearing um, for a uh, special district for um, local government building. Thanks, Commissioner. So Chris Lonsbury, the Chief Administrative Officer for Missoula County. So what we're here today is to ask you to open a public hearing, the initial public hearing on the creation of a special district, which will be used as the vehicle to transfer the federal building to the control of Missoula County and the city of Missoula in partnership. So as you know, we've been working for the last couple of years with the federal government and the National Park Service to have the federal building uh, turned over to local government for local government use uh, as part of the National Parks process as a historic monument. As part of that process, we need a single entity to be the owner of that building, and that's what this special district will do, is create a single entity that's controlled by the county and the city jointly to actually hold physical possession of the building itself. And so this special district only encompasses the federal building itself. It does not encompass any other property other than the federal building. So and not again, the lawn around it or what? The parcel that includes the federal building. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But it's the it's the federal building itself. So that that piece of land on which the federal building itself sits, which includes the parking lot and the grassy area, just like a regular lot. Okay. Um, although obviously it's several lots um, in order to do that. But it, it basically encovers, uh, encompasses the, the land footprint that is the federal building uh, at 200 East Broadway. And so uh, with this initial hearing, you, you the way the special district process works is we need to have an initial public hearing and you'll hold the public comment period open for the required period of time. And then we will close the public hearing uh, and then you'll pass the after this initial resolution that goes with the first public hearing, there'll be a second resolution uh, when you close the public hearing period for it and then uh, and then an opportunity to adopt the special district. And so this process is happening in parallel with the city of Missoula. Uh, so this uh, has been referred to committee there and then we'll go out for them to start their public hearing process uh, at, I believe, Monday's city council meeting. OK. Any comment questions? Don't see anyone online or on the phone either. OK, it's open. Yes, and so the motion would be to adopt oh, the, res sorry, yeah, I... the resolution for the <laughs> the initial public. The resolution for the initial public hearing would be the motion today. It's a, it's a little different what than you what you typically do. <laughs> so there's actually a resolution for there is actually a resolution. I would uh, move exactly what Chris said. <laughs> okay. Second, any further discussion? Or comment. Okay, all in favor. Aye. Thank you. Okay, um, Eric Dixon with uh, um, Kona Ranch Road speed limit. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Eric Dixon, County Engineer with the Missoula County Public Works Department. Um, in October of 2021, our office received a request to uh, lower the speed limit on Kona Ranch Road, which is currently posted at 45 miles an hour, and remove the allowance of a two-way passing zone. Uh, we completed a uh, we completed an engineering investigation in December of last year that did not recommend an engineering justification for the requested considerations. Uh, after that, a petition was received by the Board of County Commissioners that. Uh, again, requested the speed limit be re-examined and the allowance of a passing zone be reconsidered based on safety concerns with increased traffic speed and volume. Um, 
So that's the uh, the purpose of this hearing. Uh, it's in response to that petition that was received by the commissioner's office. So we do have uh, the uh, original engineering report uh, included for review and the petition itself. So we'll keep it brief and open open the uh, the uh, the, re the discussion. Thanks, let Eric. Me, actually, let me let me share my screen just so we can show everyone that's uh, with us where where we're talking about in case they're not familiar with it. So I guess I could give a little a little better history. So uh, Kona Ranch Road is about five miles west of Missoula uh, off of Mullen Road. It connects Mullen Road to Big Flat Road. Uh, it's about 1.3 miles long. It was constructed in the mid 1980s by the Montana Department of Transportation. Uh, as a replacement for the Harpers Bridge Road crossing, which uh, the bridge at that time was deemed unsafe. So this new crossing of the Clark Fork River was provided. Um, so that's the, the history of, of when it was constructed. Uh, again, it's posted at 45 miles an hour currently. Um, to my knowledge, it has been posted that way since uh, it was constructed in the mid 1980s, but uh, I'm not entirely sure of that. I, I believe there are others in the uh, in the neighborhood there that may have a a little more uh, knowledge of how that road developed and and what the speed limits have been uh, since they probably lived there as, as long as that road's been in in existence. So, um, uh, I guess if if that's enough of a of a history, um, we'll we'll all leave it at that. Thanks, Eric. Do we have any other? staff who want to present on this or discuss this and i can't tell who's online would it, are there any comments on this of petitioners or anyone in the room and eric when was that study done that so we we received the request in october of last year um we we had the time and and actually completed it, uh, completed the data collection in October and November, uh, completed the report in December. And, and again, that uh, that report um, for for current engineering standards, we couldn't justify a reduced speed limit on that road. Um, you know, it's it has wide travel lanes. <clears throat> they're they're 12 feet long, 12, 12 feet wide. Uh, we have five foot wide paved shoulders. It's relatively straight and level. Um, there were over over an eight year period, there were 16 accidents. Um, there was nothing really that showed a cluster indicating that there was one location uh, that was a problem. They were generally spread out over the, the 1.3 miles of the road. So um, based on our, our engineering information, there, there wasn't a good justification to say that that speed limit was inappropriate. Um, we, we collected speed speed data and um, actually it, you know it, it's posted at 45 miles an hour um, but uh, in in certain parts uh, I can I, I can pull that up here um, the uh, the speeds there you can see I'll make that a little larger so um, you know in in November of 2021 those are the travel speeds so between Big Flat and the Clark Fork River you know, eastbound 51 miles an hour, westbound 56. So even with that um, posted speed limit of, of 45, um, you know, the, the generally accepted method for determining a speed limit on an existing road is to use the 85th percentile. So when we're posted at 45 miles an hour right now, um, you know, these these speeds that are shown for the actual travel uh, population, uh, you know, a, a speed limit of 50 miles an hour could very well be justified based solely on that typical practice of using the 85th percentile speed. But, um, you know, the, the engineering data that we use uh, doesn't necessarily account for the social impacts, um, you know, some of the, the concerns of the neighborhood. So that's why you have the opportunity uh, through Montana Code Annotated that gives you uh, the chance to lower that speed limit without the benefit of the engineering investigation. And you can just make that decision administratively to lower that speed limit if you so choose. Thanks. 
and I think uh, no, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Um, I, I feel like it would be great if we could be responsive to the neighborhood and the community um, and their concerns that there wasn't there a a couple times where a child was hit. Am I exaggerating or misremembering that? At least no, of, uh, of, the, of those 16 accidents, uh, two involved pedestrians. One, one was a child crossing the road to get to the school bus. Uh, another one I don't have a lot of details on. All I know that it was in 2020 uh, in the summer at one o'clock in the afternoon, which could very well be attributed to the uh, popular uh, nature of the river access and the, the pedestrians and the, and the conflicts with vehicular traffic. So of the 16 accidents in, in eight years, two involve pedestrians, yes. OK. I'd be fine with lowering it, even though it's a well-engineered road and it's flat and straight and everyone wants to drive fast, but there's a lot of people there, so. Green promotion? Sure. <laughs> OK. Oh. Hopefully we have comment. Is there any comment? I guess not. Yeah, I, I concur based on the public testimony that we've heard in prior meetings regarding this stretch of road and folks uh, perception that this is a possible solution to some of the problems they're seeing out there. I would support lowering the speed limit and eliminating the passing zone. So I would move that we Adopt a resolution establishing a 35 mile per hour speed limit and eliminating passing zones on Kona Ranch Road. Second, any further discussion? Public comment? I would um, okay. just want to thank folks who participated in bringing this before us and uh, also. Even though it's not clear if anyone from the public out there uh, who is interested in this is joining us today. I would just say, as I think we probably said in the past, in the spirit of tempering expectations a little, this does not necessarily mean that we're going to have increased law enforcement presence out there to ensure that folks uh, are, are held to this 35 mile per hour standard. Hopefully there will be those folks who of their own accord recognize the speed limit has been lowered and will drive slower um, and there's other things that we can do to try to encourage folks to drive slower but this does not necessarily mean there's going to be a sheriff's deputy parked on Kona Ranch Road every day to keep folks in line. Thanks Dave. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much Eric. Thank you. Thank you. OK, we're going to OK, we Shane Stack opening hearing on no parking resolution. All right, good afternoon, commissioners. Um, Eric, I don't oh, know if you want to. He's I still guess sharing. I'll sh yeah, I'll share my screen. Maybe that'll um, let me know. Gosh, if you can see my screen. Not yet. All right, um, I give it a give it a go here. There we go. Awesome. All right. So I'll give you a little bit of history and maybe we'll just talk about where this location is. Uh, if you can see the the large structure to the west, that's Big Sky High School. Uh, the road here um, kind of in the middle of the page is West Central Avenue and the the roads that I'm going to describe are 29th and North and I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, gosh, probably Two years ago, um, the, the the folks that live on North Avenue and 29th reached out and wanted to know if uh, Missoula County would and could maintain 29th and North Avenue. And given the, the narrowness and the condition of the roadway, um, basically we communicated that it would be pretty challenging, but if the roadway was improved and there was a, a location for a turnaround either at North Avenue, uh, the end of North Avenue, or uh, at the end of 29th, we could we could certainly maintain the road. And so the group of property owners got together and formed an RSID, and um, that was created earlier, gosh, probably this uh, past spring. Um, that process was completed, and then 
This summer, uh, Public Works was able to pave 29th and North, which included a, a cul-de-sac at the end of North Avenue. Um, one of the challenges with maintaining uh, the roadway is being able to turn around, and and what we want to do is is create a, a a no parking resolution on the cul-de-sac and a little bit of of North Avenue just to make sure. That roadway is clear of vehicles in the winter time and, and even in the summer months so that we can get equipment in there and turned around or emergency vehicles can get turned around. So that's kind of the history behind uh, the resolution and I'll also show you. Um, this is a, a, a drawing. Um, you can kind of see the shape of the cul-de-sac here uh, and then this is the right of way. So there would essentially be 150 feet of no parking. Uh, this cross hatched zone is, is basically the end of that road it, and, and covers that 60 foot right of way plus the, the cul-de-sac area. So um, I'll go jump back to this image. It's basically from, from this line back 150 feet, which gets you somewhere in this area here. So that's the, the kind of the background. Um, Really today, all we wanted to do is open up the hearing and offer up the opportunity for folks to provide uh, feedback on the, the proposal. I've had two different people uh, reach out and I guess I'll kind of share a synopsis. Uh, one person recommended that all of North, uh, this whole stretch here have uh, no parking. And then I've also had somebody reach out and say all of 29th and all of North should have no parking. Um, and I guess I, I will open it up uh, uh, to you folks uh, there in the Sophie Mo East to, I guess, to share comments or ask questions. So I'm sorry, I was just looking at the cars parked on 29th in the photo um, or the aerial. And so okay, that you would, want me to, yeah, you want me to just, go back so to that one? If people have house guests, where would those house guests park? They would essentially be forced to um, park in their driveways and with the limited space. Got it. OK, thanks. Go ahead, Dave. Shane, would you mind bringing up the image with the right of way displayed and the uh, cul-de-sac? Yep. So is it the case right now that is, is this displaying the full extent of the right of way? And is it the case that the property, I guess it would be the way this is oriented, I guess it would be on the east side or the uh, lower side of the uh, image here is encroaching into that 30 feet. Is that the. So um, there might, me, for all intents and purposes, even though it's a no parking zone, part of it is perhaps um, not going to it would never be parked on because that property has encroached with their their uh, landscaping or whatnot into the right of way or do i have that wrong well um they could and and so let me zoom in a little bit here um so the and and this yellow line i think probably runs kind of down the middle of the of the right of way and so if you imagine another straight line running across here that would would show you where the existing right of way is plus we did end up purchasing a little bit of a of an arc up here uh, to get the cul-de-sac shifted more to the north and so that's where you see this funny little bubble shape here um, that's that's kind of where that sits is right here so dave um yeah, we do have a 60 foot right of way in here. Uh, you are correct that there is landscaping and things like that and grass here, um, but there is still a, a roadway that's anywhere from you know 20 to 24 feet wide. And then probably with this cul-de-sac, you've got a 50 foot diameter radius. And so um, there is a paved surface in here, um, but you are correct that the, the roadway abuts um, right up against a lot of this landscaping, but that doesn't mean that people wouldn't go park a vehicle right on the edge of the road um, or even on the driving surface. No, I, I get it. I guess my my point in asking the question is that, that there's even more of a justification for a no parking area here, given the fact that the property ha property owner has already encroached into the right of way, eating up space that could otherwise hypothetically be used for parking correct yeah there's 
it, when you look at these photos, you can obviously see this space is not used for roadway. It's and it's not just one property owner. Um, it's you know the property is all the way down North Avenue on on that southern side. Thank you. Is there any comment in the room on this? Okay, or online or on the phone? Okay, do we? This is just open. We don't need to do anything. Okay. Oh, I thought this says second hearing. Oh, I'm misreading. I'm sorry. Thank you. I was misreading. Okay, we're opening this hearing. Thank you. Thanks, Shane. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is what I'm at. Second hearing for road amendment petition. Patrick Swart. Or Steve Nyday. I'm standing in for Patrick. Um, so today we have the second hearing of the petition to abandon and the fourth hearing of the petition to alter the same road, the Beirut Road. Um, for the second hearing of the abandonment, you, you, Juanita, and I did a road investigation and that took place on September the 6th. Along with us, we had Bart Morris, David Mead, and Thomas Albrandt meet us on site, and we discussed the petition and the options, and at that time and at this time, we have not yet made a recommendation. Um, there are to be another road viewing, there is to be another road viewing um, to determine in large part whether there is other public accesses to public property that would um, replace the one that's under uh, petition now. That viewing will be held October the 25th and we will meet at Lower Miller Creek Road and Old Bitterroot Road, and let's meet at 3 p.m. And all are welcome to attend that. And from there, um, which is a potential alternate access, we will most likely look at several others. So I suspect that that meeting, that viewing may take a couple of hours. Um, after that viewing, um, we will come back and meet on November the 3rd here in this room at 2 p.m. Um, and at that public meeting, we will hopefully make a decision on both petitions, although that's not necessarily the case if more information is deemed necessary by you commissioners. Thanks, Steve. Well, is there anyone in the room who'd like to speak to this? We have a brand new analog timekeepers here. <laughs> can you see it? Yeah. You can at least watch. I mean, you can't see the stream. It's probably it's probably difficult to see, but you can. You can see the mass. Yeah, OK. Anyone online who'd like to speak to this? OK. And then I guess um, the next one is the fourth hearing for the uh, alteration petition. Would anyone like to speak to that? We don't see anyone in the room or online. Oh my gosh, are we to other business? I do have a quick question since Eric Dixon and Shane Sack are still on. Um, do we ever get the no parking signs up on, is it River Pines or Riverside? I can't remember which road that's called. 
I think we already put them up one. Okay, great. You're, I was you're, just you're talking at the other um, kind of the that west side of of um, the Clay Bridge. Correct. Yep. Yeah. And Steve is nodding his head. So okay. Thanks. Yes. Steve already said this, but I I, I want to make it clear. Um, the commission will hear both of these these petitions, the petition to alter and the petition to abandon again at its public meeting at 2 p.m. on November the 3rd. Uh, but between now and then, uh, people are welcome to provide uh, written comment uh, in whatever form um, to the commissioner's office. We're compiling that. We're keeping those all in one place. Uh, if you can't find those on our website, uh, call the commissioner's staff and they will direct you to the link and you can review all the comment that we've received. To and so is there a statutory like, uh, requirement to make a decision on the third or if there's more information that is needed or what have you, we can. Yeah, it. We're going to do this field trip on the 25th. We're going to start out looking at the bitter, old Bitterroot Road access to the Bitterroot River. We will probably uh, then look at at least two different access sites near Lolo, one near Riverside Park and one near the uh, the um, wastewater treatment plant for for the Lolo sewer district. Um, and there may be others. I, I think those are the ones that we're going to hit for sure. Uh, and then we'll come back with with that um, information about those sites and whether or not those are substantially the same as the uh, as provided by the, the road at issue. And you may or may not be ready to make a decision on November 3rd. And um, that will, you know, that'll depend on how you feel. That'll depend on comments that you receive between now and then that'll depend on comments that you hear on November 3rd. It, but there is no statutory obligation to make a decision that day. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Okay, everyone have a great afternoon.